Welcome to the Yang Gang Roundtable. Round we have a very handsome crew with us today. I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, I always get the introductions half the time I do. Not today. We'll, we'll, we'll do the proper introductions today because we have a couple of, um, well, we have one person we've not ever had on before. And we have Izzy. You've been on now. Yo. Now I think twice before, haven't you? Uh, it's, it's good to have regulars. Um, it's good to get to know you. So it's uh, it's 4 or 9 p.m. on Sunday, July 12th. My name is Shale. This is a basic income advocacy podcast where we talk about basic income, poverty, and electoral politics. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start letting people introduce themselves. Uh, why don't we start with you, Zach? Hey, everybody. My name is Zach. I am also host of the Liberal Conservative Report, which you can find on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you can get audio podcasts. And um, obviously, I'm also a member of the Yang Gang Roundtable. Hope you all enjoy today's conversation. Thank you, Zach. And Jeremy. Hey, everyone. This is Jeremy. Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, follow me at Jeremy Sammons one That is J E R E M Y S A M M O N S and the number one. Thank you, Jeremy. And let's go to um, Jeremy's kind of disappeared from the stack. I lost my order here. Uh, we'll, we'll just go to uh, you. Jo how do you? I'm sorry. How do you say your name again? Jose. Jose. So uh, I don't know where to start. Like. I'm autistic and is like I'm not good at conversations. Like can you That's ask okay. me specific just questions. Try to relax. Know. We're all we're all total amateurs, just figuring it out as we go along. Well, uh, like give her give her like um like what exactly do you do you want her to answer as far as like knowing about herself? Like can you give any specifics? Like rather than just say um just introduce yourself, like what what exactly do you wanna do you wanna know? Introduce yourself in whatever context you would like to be known uh, with with regards to this podcast's credits, I guess, <laughs> uh, as a speaker oh. on basic income, as a basic income advocate. Well, to start off, I'm Jose Bouchard, and I am a Francophone Canadian, and I honestly don't even know much about Andrew Yang. I just, I pretty much have a lot of the similarities that Izzy has, so that's how I ended up here. Like, it's, similar values and similar struggles right now oh wait you mentioned uh show you you did mention like universal basic income and i do want to add that i mean a lot of people have been referencing canada and stuff but the thing about it is that um the french did it first and i mean and i feel like jose i, I believe jose, jose can can vouch for that because she's actually um been getting a thousand oh now it's 1500 uh, a month um yeah. Like her, her, and, and a lot of uh, fr francophones. Uh, did, I, did I say it correctly? Yeah. Um, and um, they they've been getting this since the uh, since the pandemic started. Um, and this is, I mean, this is literally what Andrew Yang was proposing. And they've been getting it way before, um, you know, uh, Justin Trudeau did that that press release about, oh, we're going to give start giving two k a month to our people and stuff. When in actuality, well, the thing is, Trudeau is uh, he only gives two thousand bucks for it's only goes to people that were working and then now cannot work because of the COVID. Those are the only people that get it. If you have not been working, like if you're disabled or whatever, you're like nothing. Like that's yeah, that's that's the fine print it's right similar there. Similar to the way we're doing it in America at the moment. <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate. But with the francophones, they get everything. Like, I mean, it is like Justin Trudeau is the president, but he's like, just it, a but, but over here, it's yeah. a little bit different depending on their province. Just like things are how things are a little bit different in the state, each state. All right. Well, um, we'll talk about that more after the introductions. Why don't we uh, continue on with you, Ariel? So my name is Ariel. You can find me at Ariel's underscore Armada. I'm Revolutionary Thinking on YouTube. And I have an Instagram page for any of you who are interested in aviation. It's 
Ariels underscore Ariels. So that's A R I E L S underscore A E R I A L S. And uh, I also met Faye yesterday. He's a regular on podcast, and we actually met in person. So I saw pictures. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Saw that. Nice. And uh, finally, we'll all get together one day. <laughs> one day. Uh, look at uh, Izzy. Uh, I don't think I don't think I've introduced you yet. Well, I mean, like you said, I'm I've this is my first um rodeo <laughs> on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my god. But we haven't introduced uh, you today. But yeah, um, so I mean my 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 actual name is uh you know Ishmael Bolden, but I also it's go by Izzy. <laughs> but uh I but um I, I go I go by Izzy because it's easier because people think it's easier to pronounce, so whatever. Um, and, I mean, I'm I'm based in the Chicago area, um, and um, which is like the like the Walmart version of New York. So, <laughs> oh man, you know what I mean? As so, a New Yorker, that's nice to hear. All right, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. But I mean, um, uh, gosh, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the, the the issues that Andrew Yang been talking about throughout the world, they're literally happening in my own backyard. Wow, and um, and I'm actually um. And I, and I feel like, you know, UBI, I mean, like, I, I was sold on that from the beginning, but I wasn't, like, uh, I wasn't, like, really, um, like, just, like, full-on Yang Gang or whatever until uh, a, a bit much later on because I was, you know, I was, um, I had my own problems, and, and you know, um, it was usually me and Jose um, talking about a lot of things. Um, it's, like, especially, like, with... You cut out there. Are you, are we lost Izzy? Well, Izzy. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, shall we move on to you, Mia? We'll, we'll come back to Izzy. I'm sure I'll come back to us. Sure. Uh, All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I like to keep it short and sweet. I am Mia. I am at Mia Songbird on Twitter, M-E-A, and then Songbird like it's spelled. Uh, I'm a mother of two, one on the spectrum, uh, nonverbal and cognitively disabled. And uh, yeah, I I am pro UBI because as a caregiver, it would be really nice to be able to dedicate my life to my son without the stress of having to worry about, you know, how other people would, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. And I'm back. He's having a rough day. He's stimming in the background. He's having a rough week. Yeah, I know. What, I know what that means. I think we all know what the term stimming means, or most of us do, because of, there's been a, there's been some talk of autism today. So I think we both, most we both, well, I mean, f- probably four or five of us know what what stimming. It'll be means. interesting if we if we expand yeah. upon that for this discussion. I mean, and I know there are a lot of things we could we could bring up. Well, at least we I've heard of up. stuff in the U.S. where. Autistic people are stimming outside, and the cops think they're doing drugs and just get really rough with them. Like I've seen stories of that. So yeah, the well, police, the police take, yeah. They, well, the police will take any opportunity. You know, a lot of them just to sort of prey on poor people for whatever reason. So you know, whatever reason they can find, that could be it. And because, particularly the ones who are um, stimming and uh, cognitively disabled like that are definitely on the list of poor people because there's no place for them in our current GDP. And parents usually, like, when they're that severe, they have to quit jobs, rearrange their entire lives around caring for the child. And uh, unless you already have the resources before you get started, that is a very hard hurdle to cross. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're here advocating for yourself. And people like Barely. you. So, so um, yeah, Jose, yeah. would you would you please resume telling us about your uh, your situation? Well, it's it's a long story though. It's like a lot of it just has to do with the culture. I mean, the income thing. That's just one little part of it. But I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I think I heard of. Uh, like Andrew Yang on, on a different podcast where he was talking about how people are just like in the U S you know, they would just, or just out for the money. They don't really do anything. I think he said something like, I'm not good at expressing myself, but that's okay. 
it's what happens is like these people okay so canada again it's divided between the french and the english and the english ones are having the same problem as in the u.s it's like just corrupted and nothing gets done and i don't know how to describe it but no you described it perfectly yeah, that's, that's the, the corruption <laughs> runs deep let's put it that way it's like Except it's, it's not, not just, the french and the english it's the democrats and the it's republicans it's a very it's just understandable a situation yeah. Can I ask a little bit about like what the difference is and the dividing lines between like the francophone? I'm probably not saying that right. Frank yeah, it's, it's right. <laughs> and uh, francophones it's for French people. Like I think that in the U.S. we're more familiar with the English-speaking portions of Canada than we are with the French by a good deal. Okay, so <laughs> to be to compare French people here in Canada is pretty much equivalent to the Hispanics in the U.S. You probably can tell the very different culture. Like if you go to like South, like California or Texas, where there's mostly Hispanics and they can't really speak English, and they pretty much have their own community and have their own culture, literally. And that's it's just like that. And there are people who are bilingual, and obviously, and they are, they, there are provinces where both people, French and English, here live together, like where I am right now in New Brunswick and Ontario and these places, but. It's just a divide because it's just they don't we don't have same values. We have very different way of doing things where like the again, the English people seem to talk a lot. You know, if they do briefing and stuff like that, they tend to talk, but you don't really see much results. Like they would promise you a lot of things, but it doesn't really happen. But the French, it kind of tend it does happen when they say they will do something. It they tend to just get it done, get it over with. But they tend to not sugarcoat things like, I guess I'm going off track. But the English, like here, they're, they're all about being nice. You're not they're going so, off track at all. This is the information that we are interested in. So please yeah, continue. Yeah, it's very interesting. They are all about being nice. For instance, okay, so this is a, about a disability part of like my autism. Like I can talk, but it's, I'm still pretty debilitated, right? And so I also have selective mutism where I can make calls on Messenger and Zoom and stuff, but I, I cannot like make phone calls. I could just I just freeze from anxiety and I cannot speak. Like I just cannot get my words out. And it is a disability, but the English people here, and I is he told me similar stuff in the US. If I ask somebody to please make the call for me, like I would tell them what to say. They can just talk for me. What they will say, because these disabilities are not obvious like if you just look at me you wouldn't know about that part of me they would say things like oh i'm so sorry honey i'm sorry that you're going through this it must be so hard for you but you have to do it by yourself okay you're an adult now you need to do it by yourself no one will do it for you and that type of talk i don't know what they're trying to get out of by saying stuff like i guess they're trying to sound nice but it's very condescending it's minimizing you know, they wouldn't say that to somebody in a wheelchair that's stuck in a pile of puddle of water that's trying to get out. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't say stuff like that to that person. So it's like, unless it's obvious visually, it's all about visuals. Unless they can see the disability, they won't even acknowledge it. But the French, I mean, they will question everything. That's like, they're blunt. They'll question everything. But if you're clear about what you need help with, they tend to just give you that. That's the main difference for me as a both physically and mentally disabled person. That's, that's the main difference with accessing the system and everything. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, what we're dealing with here is, is like you said, it seems like the, the government is full of empty promises and nothing but. Uh, so I, it's, I of, like, it's a maddening predicament. There's not an I, alternative. I, I, yeah. I, um, I actually like it that way. I guess I don't speak French, but I really like when people are just straightforward. They're not full of empty promises. And it's like, if this needs to get done, this is the plan. We're getting it done. It's done. But we we have the opposite of that here. We have talk, 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 talk. Nothing happens. Finger pointing, blame, making unnecessary complications. Yeah. And it's it's funny. It's like it's like when you it's like when you go to a doctor and it's like you have a little uh, flesh wound and they turn it into a gash. 
the, 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 these are how corrupt and, and you know pathetic our leaders are or maybe they're just doing it on purpose but they, another it's just thing working. is another example of this is so if you you go to like you know service social services or whatever to get whatever like you know your health related stuff your financial your disability income whatever like you have these appointments the english let's say you have an appointment for 10 in the morning you arrive there let's say 10 minutes early which most people probably would because they don't want to miss it we will expect to wait at least like an hour until they will see you. Like they have, I don't know why they would make an appointment for 10 a.m. Then they should see you at 10 a.m. But it never happens. It's just wasting of time. Like you're hungry, you're tired, you're anxious, and you just sit there forever. <laughs> the French, they'll see you pretty much on time. This, 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 this is another example of how English, they just, just very disorganized, you know, they very disorganized. You're making I mean, us French, all jealous. The French literally do their jobs, you know. Yeah, that's funny. They might be I, not I, very I, nice about it, you know. If you go into the English appointment, they'll be like, "Hi, how are you?" Like they will talk about how the cold the weather is. They'll talk about what you did last. They'll just small a lot of small talk. The French they will not really do that. Like you might not feel very comfortable with them. There's an English not... expression: "Kill them with kindness." <laughs> yeah, you will not get that with French. They just right. get your job yeah. done and then go like that. that yeah. Kind of thing. The I thing like on that. the punctuality thing is kind of funny because I think in Europe it's the other way around. I think the French are more known to be uh, less punctual, and the British are pretty much on time. You know, it kind of depends. Like I heard that yeah. Sweden and those Northern Europe, yeah, they're very slow. But France, like depending on what activity is, but stuff like these things we are talking about right now, they're pretty fast from what I heard. And again, if in the, it tends to that if you go southwards. They act more like their own culture, but if you go a little bit north, mm -hmm. where it's mixed with like Germany and some other northern Europe, that's when like the culture is also a little bit get influenced and get a little bit slower. So at Europe, it just it also depends on what country it is. Yeah, I know Germany is highly punctual. That's like gospel there. You got to be on time for shit, you know. And that's similar to like the East Coast in the United States and some areas down south. I just recently moved from. New York to Texas, and Texas is a little bit more relaxed. It's more like show up, you know, five o'clock might mean five ten, you know, it might mean, you know, four fifty. The warmer the weather is, the lazier they are. Yeah, that, yeah. there's actually yeah. some some that, uh, correlation to that biologically. There's some, you know, really. It seems that like Americans and Canadians behavior. think that UK people are punctual, but when I have spoken to British people themselves, it's actually the opposite. Like they uh, again. They don't get anything done. They might look like that when their camera's rolling. Mm -hmm. But if you Maybe actually speak to people that, that live there, it never it's gets just done. just perception of like the royal family and stuff because of how much uh, protocols involved in that and such. That gives us Americans that uh, concept. Like, I'm sure in the royal palaces specifically, yes, everything is very punctual, very on time or in like their um, upper echelon. But like the rest of the country probably doesn't like care as much. You know, it's just like keeping court, presenting a good face. It's 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 so much so much palace intrigue, so much Performative theater punctuality. Yeah, and the people who do it see it as like a vital good service, like it is virtue to them. What does one do? What does one do? I don't know. Can't really believe what you see on TV, really. That's what you get. <laughs> Because if you see anything like UK, America, if you see it on TV, you would think that these are amazing places with amazing people. But in reality, it's not as good as it looks. Oh, yeah. Turns 100%. out humans are humans no matter where you go? <laughs> well, I mean, well, just, you know, just don't get your information from the professional media. Right. Or, They're terrible. Or, the gov or any governments at all. Any governments or any professional corporations and you'll be That's all right. Like, Just get your information from like this is this sources. is the age where like we're creating these Internet communities. But then it's like we should go really more local and like just knowing just our local communities. It's, it's amazing. Like how, how we live our lives on like television or, or at least our parents, not me anymore. To, like, That's our why you should run on, for office, Ariel right it is it, like television broadcast and stuff like that and like nobody knows who their neighbor is it's like ridiculous everybody know knows like 
like, oh, this country looks like that and the people in this country or this other state or this other city. But it's like, hey, who's who's like, you know, like one mile away from you, two miles away from you? Like, what do they do? What are they like? And they were like, they want to know. <laughs> yeah, I think that was, <clears throat> excuse me. That's something that, that Feiku brings up pretty often is to at least get involved with your, your local Democrat or uh, Republican, uh, what's the correct word for them? I guess uh, communities or, or local establishments. So that is, you have a uh, work your way in and actually have some, some say in how your local politics are run. Like stay active, be, be consistent, you know, stuff like that. Don't be, you know, like, uh, Say one thing and do the other, you know. Exactly. Thanks. It's like, it's, cause, cause it's, oh, cause, God, that, that, that has become some people's profession. They're professional hypocrites. Yes. Yeah. Um, before the podcast actually started, you guys were talking a little bit about um, the difference between the um, French version of the stimulus package and the English version of the stimulus pack- package in Canada. And I thought that was really interesting. And uh, are you actually getting that right now? Me, yes, just because I'm part of the French. But like you wouldn't really see that in the government website though, because again, the the country, the whole country of president prime minister is Justin Trudeau, and he's part of the pretty much the English. Because it looks like because on the outside, it's like it's just a language difference, but culturally it's not. And again, it depends on the province. But yes, for me, I'm getting that that thing, yes. So by there being two different packages, are you talking about an English and a French version, I mean, are they actually determining who gets what based off what language they speak or not what language, nationality not they are? language, but also the culture. Like, it's just... So it's not based on... It's, provi- it's not based on the providence you live conformity in. Conformity and all that. It like just... Right? It's not like if you're in Ontario, you get one. If you're in New Brunswick, you get another one. This is... Well, you Ontario know, Your neighbor could be getting something different than you. People. But like, okay, so if you were, let's say, in Manitoba, that's just one of the provinces, right. it's all English. So there's pretty much no chance you'll get that because there is not any French people working in the government. Right. But what I'm asking is, is the government giving packages to people like dependent on what race they are or is no, it based it's on culture? culture. You, what... you can't, it's like a. I don't know how to describe because I'm I just know how I am like what I get because I am registered as a francophone. It's like I get all my services in French and everything. But really, it, and it, so a if you, government. So if you move through Canada to a different part, will yeah. you be getting different services or is it the same thing because you're still As long as there's French a French people if as long as there's a big portion of French population then I'll still get it. It's it's just it's it's like this Zach. um it's like when when Andrew Yang was mentioning for his for his UBI proposal, Freedom Dividend, he was saying like as long as you're over 18 and are American, you know it doesn't matter what background you you have. I mean you can get, you can qualify for 1,000 a month. You can qualify for UBI. And it's the same thing with what uh, jo- Jose is describing about about this, except for all you have to do is just be French and be a part of the culture. And it does. And I don't, I don't even think it really matters where you're located as long as you're part of the the French community, the francophones. And I mean, the government will um, give you that money. And they're actually, and I think Jose also mentioned that um, they're also doing it in France, parts of parts of France. That's well. what I heard, so, but I don't know for sure, but that's what I heard. Yeah. So, so, uh, I don't, so I'm, I'm still, I'm still very confused. So if like, I'm an English speaking dude, if I move to a French neighborhood in Canada, would I get this stimulus check? Absolutely not. No. no. <laughs> wow. Okay. Not French. That's why. It's like. Do you so know that's how very, it is? That's like, very okay. different that from what Andrew Yang was talking government about. Well, or is it um, like who is issuing the French version of the check? That's, a, that's It's just a provincial part of the provincial. Each province is just part of the provincial government. A different kind of divide and conquer. You can do it along language barriers instead of racial. Yeah, language. I mean, I can't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine a shitstorm we get if uh, I think I cut oh, out for a second. Oh, there is a shitstorm. There is a shitstorm. Shitstorm oh, all yeah. the time. Not just about you these things, me? but it it has been a shitstorm since forever. Not just about the income thing, but just you know the the it's just a, it's like a war between French and English right now. It's like a war. 
you know, who gets what, who gets this and that, and just, you know, how unfair it is. And it's just, it's, it is a war already. It's a culture war. Oh, yeah. Like, guys, they even had a war over, over Jose. I mean, she's just, she's just trying to, to, to live her life or whatever. And the, and the Ings were trying to, like, fight over her and stuff. And the, and the French were literally fighting with all their might to try and, you know, you know, keep her, you know, to, to keep her, keep her with them or whatever. And the Ings like, yeah, because I was trying to move to an, French only province. That's what. Yeah. That's why it happened. Hmm. Is you saying her? Her. Sorry. I couldn't even imagine uh, like our government doing something like that. Like saying you only get the sinless check if you speak English or if you speak Spanish. 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 I mean, there that would be, would be quite a backlash. That, yeah. <laughs> there is a backlash here too. Hmm. There would be like an armed backlash here. Yeah, thing. that'd be a big deal. That'd be a big <laughs> or at least a tiki torch backlash. That would be for sure. And <laughs> I don't know about the income, but in Belgium, it's very similar. There's a division between French and Dutch. Hmm. Is there I mean, maybe that, there like, wouldn't be an armed backlash. It's, not I'm not saying for sure there would be, but it's what we're all afraid of all the time. So we all think like, ah, I can't. We, we're maybe, always maybe, teetering yeah. on that edge. <laughs> so we're very reactionary towards things that might lead us there. I never would have guessed any of this. Well, the yeah. well, I mean, here's here's the thing. Let's if if we're gonna go this route, um, you know, um, I mean, the English they always said to like, um, though, you know, the Hispanics come from Mexico, and even you know those who are immigrants and stuff that, oh, you can only. You, if you come to America, you can only speak English. Here and here's here's the thing. I mean, even though I mean, the the French are like that as well. It's like it's not it's not like they're it's not like they're doing it because they can or whatever. But just because you know, it's like, um, it's it's like you know they're they're just pretty conservative and um, you know they look out they look out for their own and and stuff and um, and the thing about it, like what Jose was mentioning. The French get stuff done, whereas the English, all they do is just talk. All they do is just give false promises mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, and, and also why this is so strong here is because Canada, there's about 37 million people total. French is only about 10 million. So we are very underpowered. So they are trying to stick together because if we don't, what happens is English tries to move into French part of Canada and they just take over and take over and take over. So they're just trying to protect their identity and protect their culture and everything. That's that's why it's even more extreme than it actually is. So yeah, it's, it's like the divide or conquer one way or the other, essentially. Pretty much. It's just because like in Quebec, for instance, they they did loosen it up in the past and quickly English more and more and more English arrived. And they didn't want that because now because people would get mixed up and like, you know, they, this culture start to revolve, like this change. And they didn't want that because Canada is mostly English. Anyway, the English people have the rest of the country to do whatever the hell they want. And it's like, we don't have the right to have our own province with the French only policy. Whereas the English, they can, it's just hypocrisy. Another, another example of hypocrisy. Yeah. The English are over there are like greedy, just like, just like over here. It's like, it's, it's just like, what the government is doing with us. I mean, we um they they gave millions and millions to millions trillions to the uh to the banks and corporations or whatever and we we just got the scraps. We barely got anything and especially during this pandemic and and um you and you see that same sort of greediness throughout our society. You see it in the state agencies, you see it and within family, you see it within your neighbors, you see it with, with the, the law officials, the teachers, the doctors, et cetera, et cetera. It, it just, it, the, the list goes on. And, and um, it's, it's just, it's just such a, such a mess. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, it's no surprise that the, the French would be so conservative and be like, okay, we got to, from now on, it's going to be us and nobody else, you know? So it's like, <laughs> It's like if, if you were in that position, wouldn't you do the same? Because it, it feels like you know, you, you know, like when you try to, uh, uh, I don't know, I might be rambling here, but um, like if you try to like give someone a shot, give someone a chance, or whatever, and then they stab you in the back, and then you know, 
you know, not, I mean, not all of us are like as, as pragmatic as Andrew Yang, because a lot of us don't give, give many chances. We're just like, okay, you only get one shot. And if you screw us over, you're done. You know? Now, because we're a basic income podcast and a um, electoral politics um, podcast, I would like to ask, uh, since we're sort of kind of on the subject, how is the um, like recurring stimulus um, checks affecting your communities versus how they're affecting the English communities? Like, can you actually see any difference in how people are reacting to the virus there? Okay, so I'll go to, so I'll only talk about the province that's French only versus the English only. Because right now I'm currently in a mixed area, but I'm about to move to the French only part. So I'll just compare between the two so you don't get confused. So Quebec is the only province in Canada that is French only, no English in the law. Just the whole government system is French only. That's it. Over there, because they everybody get more money and everybody get more like income assistance and stuff, they haven't fully shut down the government. And because of that, unfortunately, like more people got infected with COVID and more, much more people died, but they can't really shut down the whole thing because if they do, then eventually money will run out. Whereas the English, they can just freely shut down the government just to protect the, just to reduce the death and stuff. But they don't, but while they're doing that, they give out, only give out money to people who used to work. So it's literally like a little bit of a money saving with the English part. That's so that even if they could shut down the government, it's not going to run out of money right away. So you have a different um, uh, treasury too, as well. What do you mean by you have treasury? A shared treasury between you two? Like it's divided that deeply that like uh, the English speaking half of the country doesn't like dip into the same funds to fund these sorts of things. Pretty much, but again, like English is the majority in Canada, so it's. But yeah, they're the divide is very, very, very deep. It has been for, ever. I had no idea about any of this. Did anybody else know about any of this besides no Izzy? Idea. Izzy, you did. No idea. <laughs> yeah, this is brand new to me. No, I had no idea. They don't idea. tell you oh, this oh, on. They don't tell you oh, this on TV. <laughs> I, all I knew is that I remember one time in Vancouver, like what Jose is talking about, like the person to come to like clean up the hostel was French Canadian. So kind of like when he says like they're they're kind of like the Hispanics here. So I could I could kind of see that. It's interesting. It's the same thing with Israel and kind of like the the Arabs that I saw. So that French Canadian that you saw, did he just get things done? Because again, with the English, if they came here, if they came to a building to clean things up or do whatever, they would do it very slowly while talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, <laughs> and then they want a break. The French, they'll just get the cleaning done and leave. They love their breaks. <laughs> yeah. Did you he, see he that pattern pretty, with that French guy? He did a pretty good job. I, I, I really like that. Like my, my heritage is uh Persian. I appreciate that, yeah. But yeah, but like I think I think we kind of get things done too. And uh that that's that's what I can't stand about this country. Like all oh, Izzy, you told me to say Izzy said something about to me where he's his roofing thing in his house and the Hispanics were there oh one day God. and then he got it done quick. Okay, cat cat can I tell y'all this? Yeah, can I tell you this. Okay, so there were these guys from this company called true tech okay just by going off what jose was saying okay so first off they were promised they promised that they were going to um to show up like few weeks before like as as certain time order and my mother she she was like reshuffling everything in my room and stuff like opening all the windows like hey you got these people coming over and stuff they didn't show up friday or so or later on in the week they, you know, I got this, I got notified that, oh, uh, I got informed or whatever that, oh, they're going to be coming like 8, 10 in the morning. They didn't show up. And even after like, you know, keeping me up at night and st- stuff. And like, once again, I try to move my mother, trying to move my stuff or whatever. Then they they show up a few weeks later. And, and mind you, it, I think you, you guys saw the video where they literally tore down the freaking ceiling. You know, and this and this guy was coming at me talking about some, hey, dude, 
just to get a you know hey dude you got a uh you got a plug you got an outlet it's like dude just use the freaking outlet and leave me the fuck alone you know it's like if you're if you're done leave you know but no all they did was just talk they did breaks and stuff and then you had this one this one brother who came much later on just to what clean out the just to clean out the ceiling and and the thing the thing about it is that um all he was doing was just complaining about the the how hot it was up here and he was like oh well, let me get a let me get some water you know it's like and, and he was he he was wasting all these all this all this time just talking and and you know taking taking breaks and stuff and then and then there was i believe there was this one time where we did have hispanic workers uh come on the roof and they were done in like less than an hour it was like i could i could i could tell they were there was hispanic by just by the language they were using um and um I mean, I, I know like some of them were a, a bit nice and maybe, uh, you know, had had Western influence and stuff. Um, but I mean, they still got it done pretty quickly. Like and and I think Jose mentioned to me uh, a lot of times that um, like, you know, like, uh, you know, like the French, uh, the Hispanics, they can they can they can walk and talk at the same time. You know, they can get stuff done and, and talk. I mean, even Question. though a lot of us. Wait, wait what? Question for you, Izzy. The the first guys, the slow guys, were they um were they union guys? Just curious. I really don't know, <laughs> and I and no, I didn't hire them. They just showed up, and like your parents they, hired them. Yeah, exactly. Just went right into my room and just tore up the the ceiling and stuff, for for pretty much whatever. And then my mother was trying to play the host and stuff, and, and it was like it, it was pretty fake. But um, yeah, they they just. Oh. Uh, it's, it's when, like, when it comes to like, it, my, my mom does the same thing with like being a host it's so it's almost it's like so, they invited the party group uh it's, it's it becomes kind of like zach i think this might be what you're driving it's a question of who has the leverage to waste time and get paid anyway and who Ooh. doesn't yes. right right yeah. what you're driving yes. at zach yeah. yes um yeah and the construction because I, I worked in construction i was an electrician i'm actually wearing my shirt today i was an electrician for a long time and there's a big difference whether you're working for a, a union company or a non-union company. A lot of the union companies, there's protections built in where they can't really get fired that easily. And their jobs are pretty much just kind of given to them. There's like a, like basically the way I think it works is if you, you, you need a job done, um, and especially you see this a lot with like a lot of uh, uh, public institutions where there's rules in place where they can only hire union companies to come and do work. A lot of cities have this as well, like New York City, uh, non-unionized electricians can't really even do any work. Whoever is next in line to get a job will get the job and they'll be able to work until the job is done so there's like an incentive to keep the job going for as long as possible so people right. drag their feet and work slow right. and uh it's just it's different when you're working you cut out there for a second or maybe i cut out or a non-union company where time is money and people hustle no no does that cut out I, I, oh okay did oh, i cut out it was yeah my, my, my connection is not good first. i want to invoke uh, an old an old uh, conservative adage which is uh what if guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns, right? I want to flip that and change that to uh, if unions are outlawed, only outlaws will have unions, right? We have little mafias because good <laughs> unions have been outlawed. We don't have, you know, teachers' unions. Yeah. The mm -hmm. surviving unions are the ones that were the wor like the most brutal and able to survive this brutal political climate. That's the yeah. disgusting reality of the situation. My husband said that a lot of the bad will about unions came along because mobs actually were infiltrating unions, especially in like the big cities for a while, and using them to cover and launder money and that sort of thing, and that helped uh, trigger a backlash. A good example is I'm trying to look up the numbers right now, um, but uh, the difference between MetLife Stadium, which is where the Giants play and the Jets play, versus the stadium that the Dallas Cowboys play at, because both those stadiums are built like within a year of each other, the new ones, and 
the Dallas Stadium is much nicer and it was built much faster than the MetLife one, which was like very expensive and over budget. I'm trying to find the numbers and how long I took to complete the projects right now. But the difference was in Texas there, there's really no unions. You know, it's a right to work state where New York is and New Jersey are heavily unionized. I'm not anti-union. Not heavily. I mean, heavily unionized is a very relative term. You know, uh, I'm right in the in New, the New York, New Jersey area, and you know, you you're you're from around here. You've been here. You lived here. You know, like the still the, the number of people with union jobs is a is a it's a, it's a minority. It's a it's a it's a large enough minority, but it's a pretty small number of people with union jobs. I'm not I'm not like much of an expert on unions, but like as I recall, it isn't unions is when they're like protected by the city or they got like their own uh they got like their own contracting. Uh, a, a union is an autonomous organization of workers that advocates uh for themselves. They advocate for themselves right, right. on behalf of themselves usually uh against management who works on behalf of the owners um that's as a union within a company or within like a specific field i think would be more like what I mean, that's, you were asking that's the theory and in, in they're, practice they're independent gets, essentially like sometimes it gets ridiculous sometimes what can count as a union what doesn't but uh they're they're independent organizations. Yeah, unions are essentially independent and autonomous. All right, just just wanted to clarify. I'm like I'm this way out of my element. It's like, but yeah, okay, I got you. So like, if everybody who worked at a certain Walmart got together and said, "Hey, we're forming a union," you know, Walmart would fire them all. But uh, if Walmart couldn't fire them all because the law stopped them, then that Walmart would have a union, and that's all that would there need to be for it to be a union you know that's, that's it's like it's like having having the numbers essentially and you know it's like if a yeah, lot of us it's just an organization of workers that advocates for workers yeah okay yeah yeah i mean it's it's the name is self-explanatory essentially <laughs> yeah the very the name is self-explanatory you All right, so pay dues as well. Like you put money in towards it so that that way um, they have the um, funds to be able to um, get things done, I guess. So that, that is the American style of union. That's what we've had dues and things. And uh, yeah, uh, but it's not the only way to do a union. I mean, when, you, when, when people say that it, it evokes, you know, it evokes the sort of mafia style um idea associations that you know that that uh, act as anti-union propaganda and that's not essentially what a union is you know everything's good with the proper checks and balances and you know you shouldn't sway too far in one direction or the other that's why the left right forward thing makes so much sense in almost every application you can think of because of course the employer needs certain standards met, but of course the employees also need certain standards met. And if everybody's working together in good faith, then you've got a balance that can be reached. So I just dropped a, a link in the chat area. And, uh, yeah, it's just comparing different stadiums yeah. and the costs. And um, so Cowboy Stadium was built in 2009 and that, cost um about 1.2 billion dollars and it's approximately uh i guess like 2.2.8 2 million square feet um metlife stadium where the giants and jets play uh you know that's uh, mia you mentioned working in good uh, faith uh is uh Costs about 1.6 billion, so 0.4 billion more. And Cowboy Stadium has more space. I'm trying to find uh, how long they took to construct. Too, I'm not seeing that. Not on this so, Mia, page. So, uh, Mia, you mentioned like working in good faith. Uh, that's really what's missing in our country. 
that that that's just what I noticed when you know I graduated from all my schooling is just how many business owners out there are willing to work in bad faith, willing to like not pay enough, willing to like not explain how many corporations are out there willing to not uh, train their employees properly and just kind of throw them to the wolves looking Every to like nickel of- and right nickel and dime all the time so there's a lot like when after uh 2008 hit and the recession i think like most things became bad faith after that because their in- incentives became in a time of in in that time when wall street got away with so much it's like how can we squeeze as much as we can with giving as little as we can and that creates a ton of bad faith it's really been heading that way for a while since before that but it, there was an escalation past that point mm-hmm. where like they saw how much they could get away with more than they were already getting away with and um i think well, that there's a certain sector of society <laughs> that reaches and grabs when they see an opportunity regardless of who it's good for or bad for with no conscience we've seen a yeah. trend scum. of uh employment moving away from the community it supports you know so mm-hmm. when there's enough distance people become dehumanized and then the the human element you know the human element of, of being physically present with the people that you employ is gone and that makes you treat them quite differently and uh, that's what we're seeing in mass and yeah. i think this I is like a, uh, pardon me for being um crass but don't no shit problem. in your that's backyard what I mean, I've said shit. I think yeah. I'll to this, this don't shit in your own backyard <laughs> means don't uh um, oh, shit where you eat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, well, I mean our, our representatives have been doing I mean, that all day yeah. long. Yeah, but people yeah. people intuitively know not to do that. Um so when Ex- we move I, well when we when power gets to people's yeah. heads, they just think they're invincible and they just do whatever the hell they want. It's like when you see those nature documentaries when like you know, the, the animal just comes over and like takes a piss on whatever he wants to just like stake his claim. These people have been taking a piss everywhere on our economy to just stake their claim, even though they're just like, they don't deserve <laughs> to have these. Uh, There's a lot of <laughs> shitting going on here in the States and even in Canada. Right. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's just shit going on everywhere. Well, well everywhere. Yeah. But, but here, here's some uh, beacon of light. Like, David Kim, uh, you guys remember, he was running for Congress in the 34th. He just gave a hell of a killer speech, for even dropping F-bombs right in front of the residence of his opponent, opponent Jimmy Gomez. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. What? What do you say? He was channeling his inner Andrew Yang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because because he's right. He said, like, every single time they tell us they don't have, they don't have, it'll cost a lot. He said, then where the hell did they just print all this money to just, like, artificially invent all these stock prices? We're not falling for it anymore. And we're going to, you know, we're going to do what's right. Yeah, it was, yeah, the jig is it was up. pretty good. With a, with a megaphone. He was in front of his opponent's residence shouting about everything dropping f-bombs and getting all these shirts yeah (laughs) that was great he was like he was like right in front of the nest of corruption i wish i could i I don't have a video i don't have an issue i don't have an issue with like cursing every once in a while and stuff you know especially if it's placed right that's authentic i I wonder yeah yeah, i think so you know but a lot of people i think will disagree so i'm just just asking the question casually you know does i mean do you guys i mean think that would help more or or hurt more i I mean the reason why as a as a producer, I'll give you the pros and cons the way I see it. Uh, That's not. I, I actually talked to uh, Pastor Stephen Brings about Andrew Yang that he didn't really like so much was that he you know threw the f bomb around a lot. So oh, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys I can, think? I, I think I can expand upon that, Zach. Um. So okay, the difference between so let's say you know like Andrew Yang when he drops the f bomb and stuff. I mean he's he's literally he's just being emphatic and and like really just emphasizing on what he's talking about. Whereas if someone like Beto or Bernie Sanders throws the f bomb around. It's like, huh? What? What? What the hell are you yeah. doing? You know. So it's like to say it naturally. You have to be able to say it with some form of conviction behind yeah. you. And if you are like, if you're just 
dropping it for no reason, people are going to be like, sounds like you're just trying to. Um, like you're for force. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you're posing. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's being a parent. Being an edgy little, if you aren't feeling it for real and you're saying it because you think people are going to pay attention to you because you said it, then it's, it really shows when people are like, perform, like, when I said it before, I like had to like quote myself and stuff because I knew it wasn't going to come out sounding like natural and such. I knew that because I was quoting the phrase, but like, if you're using it in a con, I don't know. I got myself lost again. Oh, I may. I do want to mention since we're on this subject, and this is this is just unbelievable. But Jose actually mentioned one time that someone literally told her that she's not autistic because she 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 curses. It's like it's, it's like. I I don't know where where that came from, but that that was just like I don't I don't know why these people have these these sorts of like beliefs or whatever that just because you curse you know makes you you know not have <laughs> it's like it's, it, it's uh, like I, I just I just don't I just don't get that and it's before I forget you have, go, go ahead oh that's a weird before one I, I don't think that's one of the stereotypes that I've ever heard of fortunately. I want yeah, to answer I had a Zach's, lot of, uh, I want to answer Zach's I had a lot of people query. say stuff like that, you know, once about the cursing that another person said, I cannot possibly be autistic because I don't like weighted blankets. Like, okay. Yeah. I mean there's that, no that, that, that makes me suffer. You're coming up against it. the no true Scotsman fallacy. It's a logic fallacy. Just tell any anybody like, nah, no true Scotsman fallacy, fuck off. Because it's a <laughs> stupid purity test. Like, you know, every every X likes Y. You can't be X if you don't like I just you know, just fuck off. Uh, Shut but, up. Uh, before I before I get too off on any tangents and before we get too far from that, Zach, I want to answer your your your, your query about the pros and cons of mm-hmm. allowing people to curse on a show. I think the pros are it allows people to feel comfortable and I think that that wins out over the pros of disallowing it, which are um, a little bit possibly more proliferation into some search engines. Into well, I wasn't engines. I wasn't talking about it on the show. I was talking about uh, just somebody. Oh, okay. I guess you cut out there and I missed. Yeah, my con- I intuited the context crap. wrong, so that's on me. Politicians <laughs> right. publicly um, anyway. out being outspoken with their uh, their colloquialisms. And I believe one of the cons are, you know, people are like, oh, my God, did, did he really just say that? You know, you got people who are who yeah. just that judgmental and stuff be like, you know, it's like, oh, so, watch your mouth. It's like, fuck off. It's like, sorry. <laughs> so you, you just want to know, like, how we feel about cursing in general, if it's OK? I would say no, yes. no, 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 no. I was I was saying, is it helpful for a politician to curse or does it hurt more? You know, are they going to oh, get no. more votes? Are they going to lose votes think if, if it they're hurts cursing? right now, but only nominally? Mm-hmm. And that will flip yeah. in about 10, eight, to, eight to 10 years, maybe two cycles or so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like the uh, guidelines for uh, TV and such have slowly gotten looser and looser over time. I think that uh, yeah. we just don't care as much about cursing as so, time goes on. Yeah, I'd say that because it's a nominal difference overall you can then sort of look at your demographic to figure out if cursing is right for you mm-hmm. so i'd say for yang it was yes yeah yeah I, I think normal as long as you're being as long as it's normal it's fine well it never was normal before not before trump you know and he moved well, i mean like the envelope with this so much i haven't heard of trump either. swear so, yeah, have, I, you, have you heard true. trump curse if you're not if you're comfortable with getting a thousand bucks a month you're going to be comfortable with something i haven't heard of you on the street being either. like i have a good fucking morning my friend you know and you're going to be okay with that <laughs> yeah i well, swear really regardless curse, by the way yeah. uh it's not um it's, it's not like it really matters like i said nobody cares about cursing as much but trump has cursed a few times yeah, well, like times no more. I think than Andrew Yang ever has, particularly. That's like, I think I think yeah, he's if, really if, open if you're, uh, if you're uh, saying something of substance, then okay, like here and there. But if you're just cursing and you're saying nothing of substance, and every other word word is a curse word, that doesn't help you. Well, I mean, I would go as far as to say, why does that even bother you? Or like, why does that bother you? Why? Well, no, no, no. It it doesn't bother me. I'm just saying that I'm not impressed by it. Well, no, it no. doesn't bother me. I'm not. Of course, impressed. I mean, but yeah. is anyone? Is there an expectation? Anyone's impressed by that? Everybody, I think, understands that a person. It can't come out. off as pretty edgy, like like you. I think that's what you said. Was like, so, like children uh, are impressed, right? 
Okay. They'd be like, oh, he said a bad yeah, word. Exactly. exactly. It's like, oh, oh, he said the F word. I'm like, no. It's like, well, that's did, like, did, did, did he, like, did he yeah. say it, it that it had to do with something of substance, not like related to emotion? Or are they just trying to be edgy? But there's really nothing underneath that. Mommy, so what does that word mean? <laughs> right. I mean. I so w- what I'm thinking of, what comes to mind to me was before Trump, I think in like 2010 or 2009, whenever Obamacare was passed, uh, Joe Biden was caught on a hot mic saying, I think to Obama, as the bill was getting signed, this is a big fucking deal. <laughs> and it was caught on a hot mic. And it was big news. And like, I I heard you that. know, the Who media cares? really, you know, dragged them through the mud about Who cares? her. Hair. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. I don't think, you know, it, it just shows that he's a human. Her, you know? Like it's, it's, it is essentially, it's, that is an invasive microphone. That's essentially it's in his like <laughs> private life or perhaps his professional private life. It's not something that's supposed to be broadcast. It's the way he communicates with the person who knows. Make cursing great just, again. <laughs> it's wrong to criticize him for it. It's wrong to make it a new story where anyone who, who enjoys it as a new story is wrong. We have to get right. ourselves. And, and what we invited Paul Ryan. Right. And he, he, he threw in a couple of f bombs. If the reason you want to hear Biden say um, "fuck" is that you think it's funny, then you're on the same level as like watching a YouTube video where a child is saying "fuck" and that's getting you. I don't know. It's fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God, fuck, Daddy. Just, just like that. <laughs> That's the only that's the only effect that it should give you is like, oh, kind of funny at most. It definitely shouldn't be a center news story. It shouldn't be um, something that people care about and on any like non-ironic level. I just got me going thinking back to like that one video they had of Pete Buttigieg and Andrew Yank. It's like, what's your favorite curse word? And people was like, uh, I don't think this is appropriate. And then Andrew Yank was like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That uh, was actually it's really more, funny. Very emphatic. It was funny. Fuck it is. I remember I, all that. Uh, uh, but I think what's worse, what what's worse though, because cursing, I think what's worse is putting people down. Like for instance, I seen a video on YouTube. I think it was quite a while ago. But Donald Trump, he makes fun of people. So he's like, "This guy's a serious weight problem. Go home and start exercising." And that kind of thing is way worse than cursing. Oh yeah, yeah. That... When That's he's like borderline really obese does. himself, it's uh, kind of ironic. Exactly. That kind of thing, particularly exactly. from somebody that high profile, if uh, if you happen to get the wrong person at the wrong time, you could really get hurt. Spiral that person into something. Um, yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, Rashid Tlaib got all that backlash. I, I liked it, which was weird. Yeah, that is, if you guys remember when uh, Rashid Tlaib said we're gonna impeach that motherfucker, that was <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. I, I, so I understand. On one hand, I understand like the anger because it was like it was like before she was even elected. I think it was like she was clearly running on just like getting Trump out of office, you know, okay, nothing yeah. else really. And that's the story was on the Republican side. But they were also saying at the same time, she's cursing and that's unprofessional. We shouldn't were, have that in Congress. They were, they Meanwhile, we have the Republicans. I mean, they have Trump in office yeah. who says crazy shit every single saying. day. So it's like two different standards. Zach, I'm sorry, you keep cutting out. I don't know if it's yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. I'm talking over you because you keep stopping and starting from I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, gonna, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna speak. Yeah, it's like two middle school kids trying to go left and right. Like yeah, in the hall. let me. I'm. I gotta stop. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave and come back, and hopefully it's uh better. Um, yeah, when we start be a translator, computer. man. All right. <laughs> I rather that people curse than our country be cursed. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I mean, hmm. That was deep, man. Right. Yeah, because because our, our our I mean our country is cursed. If 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 you got to use curse words to like undo the curse of like corporate kleptocracy, if you're curse all at, you want. To end yeah, it, so. I'm I'm gonna add on to that, Ariel. I'm gonna add on to that. I feel like 
Andrew Yang is allowed to curse put because he's actually getting stuff done. He's standing by his word. It's like what Jose was mentioning about like when they say they're gonna do something, you know, when the friends say they're gonna do something, they mean it. You're gonna that's fucking Andrew, do it. That's what Andrew Yang has done. He said he was gonna get money to the people. Guess what? He fucking created humanity forward, and now right. he's he's giving a lot of people throughout the nation um a certain a certain amount of money. It's like you know, it's like two. 250 to 500 right. sometimes even more it, you know well, it's like if, if you think yeah exactly if you think about it, izzy it's like you know the old saying like sticks and stones will break my bones but words will never hurt me yeah. but what about that that in reverse like nice words aren't gonna do shit for me exactly. and i'd rather that you actually helped me you know yeah exactly like like That's you know the power of a ubi 100 percent. exactly right it's it's like enough with the talk uh, oh, oh, yeah. There, there is something. Actions speak louder than words. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Unfortunately, so many of us are pushed <laughs> into a corner where the only actions we can make are um, pay gated. And uh, it's, right. It's and it's, and the actions are shut off to you when you don't have the resources to take those actions. Hence, same the concept with a mental health rule. You know, I'm venting about something, and English people are like, oh. I'm here every time, anytime you need to talk. I'm like, stop saying that unless you mean it. Because every time they say things like that, I try to reach out to them. They always have an excuse for why, why they cannot talk to me at that time. Exactly. This is like, they're just. Hey, yeah, assholes. Just be pure and simple. Trying to want to look like a hero to the public. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's perfectly it, too. It's like they want to save face. They, they 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 always want to present like a public. They want to image. be admired, like oh right, my God, exactly, you're a good exactly. person for saving this person, like oh my god. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's like they want to put on this face that they're helping, but then when the cameras are off and nobody's recording them, they're they're just a just a scumbag, right? If you really <laughs> want to be a hero, you work as hard as you can to help as many people as you can without caring who knows. I remember when uh, I remember when Militia. Um, and unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it. But she showed me. Um, and did y'all remember when I was? I think I think Mia. When remember when I told you about her and and what happened with the kid and stuff, and mm -hmm. and the, and the organization didn't really give it back to her stuff. She actually showed me a picture of this lady she was trying to converse with, whatever about you know trying to get that back kid or getting an update and stuff. And this lady, she hasn't she hasn't given her updates or anything since. But she she has like this picture of her like acting so helpful and stuff to to little children or whatever but um you know in actuality the only one she, like i she she mentions that you know i you know it i don't know if it's an accusation or it's strongly true but this lady is also is also indians and she she i think she's a bit racist to to militia you know to her own to her own people whereas with if it, if militia was um you know uh, a white person whatever like yeah they they she she would have definitely helped her out but this lady she had a picture of, of acting like she's been helpful and and helping these like children or whatever because because you know she had a camera on her and stuff but i mean um when she was trying to you know when when um militia was trying to reach out to her or whatever she she was she was nowhere to be found and the only way for militia to to really you know, understand the situation was to go on their Facebook page and just find out that oh, they already uh, adopted the kid, they already did the surgery. Nothing uh, to mention mention about it. But I mean, if she gets pissed off, they will just be like, oh, you know what? You know, after everything I've done for you, you know, you know what? Then you ain't gonna see this kid. You know, this is like, and I think jo Jose has you know various stories about that as well. But it's like, yeah, these 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 just. You do got like Ariel says. You got a lot of these assholes who um 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 who who say one thing and do another. What what was that? All, all talk, no actions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and and it's it's funny because I finally saw Yang as like you know it wasn't gonna be Obama. I think I think that. Like not say anything, but Obama was like that. Like everybody like went to his speeches and he would make everybody feel like, oh wow, he's such an elegant speaker. Oh, he's such an elegant speaker. But what was the plan? It was just like, oh, hope and change. It's like, okay, what does that look like on paper? How do we execute that? Oh, hope and change. Okay, get the get the hell out of here. But then Yang was like, hey, you know what? 
I got the plan right here. And A, B, and C, bing, bing, boom. You know, A, B, and Z. Yeah, yeah, bing, bing. It, it's like, I think. 150 I, I of them. Think, right, exactly. Like, like Obama just summed up the the kind of like, oh, his words are all nice and they make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. But shit didn't happen. Like on uh, that New York Times interview where he was uh, saying, he, he specifically uh, called Obama like, um, what was it? Like a, his, a disappointment. Yeah, that was it. I yeah. didn't want to say like, the wrong word. I wasn't that was on Joe Rogan. Right. But, well, he well, there was also he another New York, New York Times. Times interview okay. where they asked him specifically what his greatest disappointment was, and he answered with Obama. Oh, that was him. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, voting for Obama, right? Yeah, I think well, like no, no, like like what what the reality? Right, exactly. You know, yeah. um, what he thought Obama was trying to stand for, what uh, he had convinced him that he was trying to stand for, and then what was actually accomplished when he right. was brought in. Office. Well, well, it's it's actually funny. Like you, you can just think about it. Like Obama gives this like huge speech to the public, and then he goes into a back room with a bunch of like you know, rich Wall Street guys. And they're like, are you really going to do that? And he's like, nah, but it gets them all excited. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I like to get yeah, like more verbal. verbal oh, the more oh. verbal you are, the less productive you get. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's I like it. to give people some benefit of the doubt. I like to think, and perhaps a bit of this is me just trying to be hopeful, that he came in there with hopes that he would be able to get as much done as he could and then um, hit up against the system. Uh, well, other yeah. than Obamacare, I really didn't see like any plan fleshed out. He was okay. there for eight years. He should have done eight, not, more than yeah. that. If not it was four years, years then there was if, more if that it was just four years, then maybe, but eight is like enough time to get more shit done. Yeah. And and what yeah, I what I remember from the, the what I remember from the Obama administration is that um well, well for stars you know like uh what the Republicans when weren't in favor of him they even said like we're gonna do what we can to get him out of office the Congress weren't really um you know he was been no trying to bend over back for Congress and they wouldn't budge they wouldn't like get any of his policies approved and stuff and then his administration there were a lot of people who were just who were just so fake and condescending towards him, and he's the freaking president. And this is his own administration. These people are, are trying to tell him how to run a country. And um, and then I believe the, his his biggest mistake was when um, there were these banks who it was like again the banks where they were uh, screwing people over. And I think they were rather than giving, I think it was the argument it was dealing with the homes and stuff. And instead of uh, keeping the homes from being foreclosed, they just gave the money to the banks. And then, I mean, I, I watched this video about what happened behind the scenes, and I think Obama was livid about it. But then you had one of his snakes in the administration going, hey, uh, I don't think this is a good idea. And then and then he decided to sit down with um, the you know these bankers or whatever, you know, these 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 CEOs and stuff like that. And um they were they were sweating, they were sweating bullets, like they were like, oh shit, like Obama's gonna give us a remake. But instead, no, Obama gave them a beer. So it's like, like what the, and the we people have are like a system what? that intentionally seems to turn people into the worst versions of themselves the higher up the ladder they get. Yeah. That's what I think is a larger problem than any of Again, Yang talks about it, like the incentives that are in those systems, like you can be genuine as you, like you can be truly genuine entering it. You are truly wanting to make a change coming in, but the barriers that are put up and the ways you have to work around things and the justifications you have to make to get one thing to happen while sacrificing for another that shouldn't be in the first place. It's like what uh, it's like what allow Yang you said. to fall like slowly, like um, like like being boiled slowly. If you're the frog in the water, who if you slowly turn the temperature up on them, they don't notice that they're being cooked, you know. And I think that happens to a lot of people who get into this political sphere. They come in thinking they're going to be the one to change the world, and then realize they're just as corrupt as everybody else. Like that one time when uh when uh 
Yang was mentioning, you know, when he had a good friend of his who went to D.C., saying, like, he he swore that he wasn't going to become a lobbyist. And sure enough, he became a lobbyist. So it's like, that's, that stuff happens. And, and who knows, like, how many people came in. I don't in know. Yeah. It's, it's like this black hole of corruption that just wants to, like, suck you in with this gravitational pool. And you have to, like, come in with fun. some antimatter, you know? <laughs> right? I mean, it's like... If, if you want to win an election, you have to get the money because, as we all know, if you look at any of the research, what correlates to who wins the most elections mm. is who raises the most money. I really think that like Yang was the was like the the diamond in the rough kind of thing with Aladdin, but but like you know, yeah, it takes the, a very strong person to be able to resist corruption. He did demonstrate when he quit the first job that he was doing fine enough at. It's not like they fired him. He has some serious quit. skin, I'll give you that. Yeah, he quit because, because he's like, what the hell am I doing? Was soul crushing to him to have to change his values. And that is something that is really rare to find. Like a lot of people have values, but when presented with compromises, will it's for sale. <laughs> slowly it's like, make justifications that benefit themselves. It's really hard to resist that for the best of people. I don't mean that to sound like um negative or anything it's, it's it's not something bad it's within us but like when you find somebody who is above that you should elevate them the best you can you know yeah i if only the virus happened in january god yeah. seriously like what timing but but it's like it it my extended unemployment is like more than a UBI. It's like by the end of this month, it's like I'll have ten months of UBI and like crammed into like all these things. So I'm 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 gonna like use that and I'm gonna like uh, uh, change my life positively in such drastic ways. Hopefully, maybe get some media attention, and then um, you know from there, you know yeah, that'll that'll just be good. <laughs> oh, just make the case. Because all this evidence is coming in, it'll come in that the stimulus checks and the unemployment money helped people, help the economy, help mental health. And the only people who are going to be against it back then are the ones that are just like totally just rotten to the core, corrupt, useless, that we have to get rid of. Again, unfortunately, a lot, you know, of, those a lot people of are the people. people who get to the top because that's mm -hmm. how you get to the top. I think a lot of people at the top, too, once they're there. I mean, corruption is is a big deal. Don't get me wrong, but I also think there's like an echo chamber effect where, when you're wealthy and powerful, the people that you're surrounded with are also wealth wealthy and powerful. You don't spend a lot of time talking to your average Joe, and you don't really know how, you know how people are actually feeling out there, you know, and and you and can't. You got a group that's like, justifying its own existence to itself. Yeah. Good point there. I think, uh, who was it? Um, uh, didn't Mnuchin say something like the stimulus check, the, the $1,200 check should last people like three months or something ridiculous like that? <laughs> <laughs> it, might not have been, it might not have been three months, but it was something ridiculous. Zach, uh, if, if it was reoccurring and if it was monthly, yeah, maybe. Right. Right, right. But it and, just shows and I just want to go off saying, like, listen, if you can give trillion dollars bailing out the banks, whatever, surely you can give that same amount to bailing out the people. It's like, come on, yeah, the, yeah. You got you, and you have cultures like the French who are fifty years behind, fifty years behind, and they could get this stuff done in their sleep. So it's like it's so it's like we shouldn't be faltering over these things, even even with. The corruption and but the problem is that despite all the resources and despite like you know all a lot of the people in higher power whatever they just don't care they like they they want everything for themselves you know it's like we to them we ain't shit even though we are their foundation you know we're, we're the reason why you know they're they've reached that point they've reached the 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 pinnacle whatever they reached the top of whatever like we're the we're the biggest shareholders investors and the biggest workers and stuff and we should we deserve our compensation now so that's absolutely gonna true. Have to, gonna have to fight Jeremy for it says, steve said the stimulus check should last 10 weeks 
What planet is he living on? One where a week is um, one day. One day, yeah. Like a, uh, that's, maybe that's, a that's, week. The time it lasted. <laughs> Many yeah. days and it was gone already. I remember he like he, he, he's like this is really gross. Like he has this picture with him and his wife with like a sheet full of dollar bills and he's like wearing these gloves and they they, they look they look like a villains from a James Bond movie. Guess and uh, Manuchin. You know it's actually Hebrew, it's like Menuchin, which is kind of funny. I was thinking of Munchkin, funny. like like the like those mini Munchkin. Donuts. Yeah, yeah, Munchkin. Yeah, that's Munchkin. Funny. Isn't that and the little donuts from the Dunkin' Donuts thing, like little balls or whatever? <laughs> yeah, and and he, there there was also like a photo taken with his wife, like walking off of a private jet, and someone like shamed her for like flaunting her wealth, and then she attacked them back. It, you know, it's it's, like- these people are disgusting. It's it's like you 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 give people crumbs. When they're the ones who like pay your salaries, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when power gets unbalanced, it tends to sway that way until, you know, until it breaks. That's why it's so important to get the Yang Gang in Congress. Oh yeah, we're the ones who can get shit done. You know. Change the game. Mnuchin asked to use twenty-five thousand dollar honeymoon. Uh, uh, go no one two thousand twenty five thousand dollar an hour government jet for his honeymoon. So you you want you want to talk about people who are abusing I know, right? uh, tax pay, payer funds, huh? You want to talk about people spending frivolously and not using putting that money to to good use and like wasting our money? Don't talk about Definitely people. Definitely the government China. doing that because right. I don't have access to enough money that it could be possible to use it frivolously. Right. I it, have to spend every cent I have trying to survive. I mean, what so, did Joseph Joseph Goebbels say? Accuse others what you are guilty of. <laughs> yeah, it's like they project your your actions to other people. Like it's narcissistic. $219,000 a year for saying that these people are spending too much money. Is the secretary of the treasury? Oh, how 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 ridiculous! Just yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome. So, yep. Be, even before Donald Trump, he was really rich. Uh, yeah, he was a, a, a Canada, Canada going on at all, Jose? I don't. Uh-huh. We're, we're running low on time here. We're down to like our last 30 minutes. I don't want to miss out on getting a little bit of your input on anything. Like how is the corruption government wise in Canada? What do you mean? Like what kind of corruption is everywhere is corrupted. So yeah, but like, um, what are the issues that are like, um, like who are the worst offenders there? Well, like- there's, especially with the English, but I mean, it's, it's existent everywhere across the country. But it's it's worse with the English. But like, there are people that take advantage of the coronavirus emergency funds. Like you know, the English get two thousand dollars a month or whatever. That they, those that who used to work or whatever. And these people would take advantage because they found out that in the beginning, if you apply for that thing, you get it. But later, when it's time to do your income taxes, that's when they find out that you've been abusing the system and then they make you pay back, but they don't realize they don't care about that right now because it hasn't happened yet. And then they're like, just applying for that thing, double the amount, triple amount. And then just, you know, so it's just constantly just trying to catch those people so that the money doesn't run out, that type of thing right now. Yeah. They're, they're looking for a loophole. They found a loophole and stuff. Yeah. Like I know somebody that's, and I'm not gonna mention names or anything, but she's a English and she's native, like ab- indigenous, and she has a child and all that, so she gets pretty good amount. I don't know how much, but she and her partner would apply for this emergency thing, like triple amount, and just you know, 
they so they're like eating out every night and whatever they're just using and using and using it's like i don't know it's it's, it's sick that's unfortunate Leeches. Right. yeah like i i think that everybody should have been getting it i don't think that it should have been denied to anybody but nobody should be getting double or triple or anything like that once. yeah that's the that's the thing is like this is i think the government is a little bit stupid and it's kind of their fault because if somebody applies for this thing on their website, they should, even if it takes them a little longer to give the money out, they should check them before giving it to them. What they're doing is if you apply, you automatically get the check. Okay. They will mm -hmm. check. They will find out if you have been cheating later. That's stupid. It's like you don't just give out money just because somebody applied and then find, punish them later. Just Why would you do that? Like, you know. The multiple times thing is the thing that's really like, like, how do they, do they not like check to see, um, like if they've applied before or anything or do they apparently just, not, like, apparently not just auto literally auto approve everything that seems like that could be automated into just checking to see if somebody's already run and they won't even do it that way. That's very lazy. Well, yeah, I'm, like I'm telling you, English government is lazy as fuck. They just sit there with their Starbucks coffee talking about what they watched Netflix last night. They don't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, Jose, like uh, here, you know, our government, like they're freak they're doing everything by mail. We're supposed to be doing things electronically. They're still doing That's things. That's what they're doing too here. They yeah. the thing that they don't I mean, unless you have direct deposit from your bank, which is not that common anyway. They take forever to ha stamp the fucking envelope with your hand, handprint everything, and put the check in the fucking envelope, and then mail each home by hand. Handprint? Takes them forever. Huh? R literally handprinting? Okay. That's what I was told. I mean, they, they don't, you know, they do everything by hand, like mailing, like the old-fashioned stuff. You know what? What you know? In like in the nineteen sixties and seventies, where you just you write letters and just mail it to your people, and so that's just like that. Nothing. Oh is no! Hey, yes. uh, if you don't mind me asking, how how old how old are you? Me? Yeah, I'll be twenty two in in a few weeks. Oh wow! Okay, so you're relatively young. It's like we we have like people who are really really old in charge of a lot, and they hard... you know what? Honestly. Time for those old bags to get the fuck out, retire, and let the younger generation take over because <laughs> things need to move on. It can't stay old fashioned forever. You know? Is that the same yeah. situation in Canada too? Are they like not? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Power? Yeah, they're all old. They're all fucking old, and it's like uh, it, they're that's literally the Yang same. Was Yang was say, Yang said, "When I'm old enough, I hope I have the grace to get the fuck out of the way." That's what he said. <laughs> And they don't want to do that. And I remember Biden was specifically asked. It's he said, amazing. He said, he said, um, he said, he said, um, uh, and and you talked about you know passing the torch. And then Biden just said, I'm still holding on to that torch until the whole building burns the the hell down because of you, you idiots. Let's, let's look at the Sorry. whole situation from a real macro zoomed out perspective, from a generational perspective, right? There are just still so many of them still a majority of them they're still in power you know and they're now becoming demented starting to die they are starting to lose the ability to know what they're doing but they do not have the grace to right. to admit it to themselves well, or anyone else I mean, and that's why, really what we have to address yeah, as a culture yeah. how do we uh, fix that you know how do we think that it's because they have the, the leverage because it's too much credit well, hold on, hold on. They, they, we just, I just want to, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just speak in a second. I just want to just uh, put a bullet on it. The, the issue is that they have all the leverage because they still have the numbers. And like when the majority of the human race is like, is, is, is elderly and in control, we just got to get them out of control. You know? Yeah. Uh, all right. No, that's not, that's all. Yeah. What I was saying is the reason why these old people, are getting more and more narcissistic is because the middle-aged people are letting it happen. They are giving them all the respect just because they're older. Just because you're older, your 70s, 80s, 
you could literally do no wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why these people are still in, in control and thinking that they're better than anybody. They're enabling, yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we had it. Have any of you ever played any of the Halo games? I wish. Uh, I, played, oh. I played up to uh, okay. Halo 3. All right. There, there's I something kind of called from Bungie to something else, and I started playing. <laughs> right. Well, I was just saying it was just something called like when an AI gets really old, it it goes rampant. They call it like rampancy <laughs> when it like ruses my and I, and I think that's where they are. It's like we have it, it's like they're the AI that has gone rampant. I like and we have to them. stop. You know. I like what Jose was saying though. That's sort of moving in the direction of a solution. What do we do? I mean. It seems like that, that leads me to think Joe Rogan is like one of the most dangerous people in the world right now because he's like the thought leader who will make it okay for middle-aged people, you know, newly middle-aged people, I guess, uh, well, Gen, X, Gen Xers who are truly mm. aging into power, uh, make it okay to say, yep, this, this is what's happening. The boomers don't know. Uh, and like yeah. you know, the more people watch him. I, 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 You're like a mutiny I or something. Of sorts, yeah. I mean, just it's a cultural shift, I guess. Uh, right. I think that that's part of the reason why things have gotten so divided to an extent. Um, there's. And they control all the wealth, if you think about it. Like they, they, they were getting their jobs when you know the economy was like okay, and I don't know housing price. You know, their their real estate was looking good and property values were going up, whatever. And we never got to see that because of the crash. We were just gaining some kind of foothold. When, when, by the time the crash happened, they already kind of like got, like had everything before. And we were, we were starting like at that time. So it's, I don't know, but like we, we have to find a way to like, uh, I, th their wealth should not equal power or their clout. I don't know. It's very, it's complicated. Or at least there should be a level at which everybody enters onto the scene. Like, say, with democracy dollars, ranked choice voting, and a UBI. I'm, you know, got to circle back there every time. Oh, basic income, that would be a good thing to have. I'm in great. favor. It I'm for good. it. it could, it could help Let's take a vote. Like it a, all just comes back to all that. in favor. It's so amazing. Who's right, in exactly. favor of basic Wait, income. But but you, don't oh don't God. you see like the paradox that we're in? It's like they they know that, so that's why they're against it because they want to hold on to the power and they don't want to give give it, really it out. It's a power dynamic thing. When it, it's, it's, it's 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 yeah exactly. It's this power dynamic, but we have to find a way to exploit some kind of glitch in the system to be like that's it. I mean, I mean, we're more. It doesn't tech even savvy benefit them really in the right. long run. Like if everybody they just watch Joe Rogan, just push Joe Rogan. That's the glitch in the system, Ariel. Just. I mean, it's not really good to the system. It's just sort of the natural order. Look, you know, we're just uh, a bunch of, uh, of of primate animals, social animals, and uh, the the old. There, there are too many old people. It's just I'm, like the way the generation <laughs> worked out, and we just need to gently remove them from power. And people we, and should be upgraded. Rogan is the people middle aged upgrade, guy. Like the upgrade he's phone. the middle aged thought leader that other middle aged yeah. people are looking to. And seeing and then and starting to think, yeah, it's it's okay. It's within the Overton window to think that because Joe Rogan thinks it. So like Joe Rogan's the he's the guy. He's the I'm sorry, what was like that? He's the, he's the solution. I said people in the government, you know, they should be upgraded with age with the newer people, just like people upgrade their smartphones. Exactly. Like, like, there should be like a cap on how old you can be. Like an iPhone, yeah. Be, like, you can't run if you're this young, maybe you can't run if you're this old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, term limits. Term limits help too, yeah. Because, you know, you can elect somebody within a certain range and know that their acuity and their uh, understanding of things is at the level when you elected them, as yeah. opposed to them just kind of like getting in there and then uh, cementing it and then slowly fading off from the rest of the reality. Yeah, and that's they, like, you know, saying yeah. you using a flip phone that's barely working, you're still holding on to it. That's like that, you know, people you go. get old, they should just go down it's like you know it's, it's like, like uh, it, rich ryle and me. rich ryle and me from yesterday did not agree on very much but it's telling that we can definitely agree on term limits we will agree on term limits you know and that's the thing oh. that will get um. the problem 
solved at the moment. I don't know if it's I one thing they can no, get the problem solved. I mean, it's no. Yeah. Uh, so here's all right. So I'm going to give you an argument against term limits. All it really does, it does two things that are potentially negative. Number one, what you're doing is you're taking away, um, you're essentially taking away choice from local communities, right? And if you have, if you're a congressperson, if you don't like your congressperson, well, that community, they can elect somebody else. The real problem is gerrymandering, right? I mean, if you look at Congress, if you look at Congress as a whole, the approval rating has been in a gutter for years and years now. But if you look at individual Congress people and how their district views them, generally it's actually pretty high. So I mean, there should be more parity there between Congress as a whole versus individual districts. I think the problem is gerrymandering. If you, I think both have term opinion. limits. Well, the problem with term, the other problem with term limits is that you take away institutional knowledge. Um, everybody gets better at their job as time goes on. The longer you're at that job, the better you get at writing bills, the better you get at dealing with other members of Congress and whatnot. So and you get rid of I mean, knowledge. There, there is, look, in terms there are definitely benefits, but we're at a point where it's I like think, there's a I think the drawbacks outweigh the benefits. Like I well, think you're, everything you're saying is is correct. Mm -hmm. I would say Zach, but in scope does not add up to the problem that would be solved by term limits. What are the well, I think the problem is from, I think gerrymandering. If we fix yeah. gerrymandering, I, I don't think we're going to fix gerrymandering before term limits. Term limits is more of a communicable thing. It's more of a, a mm -hmm. cell across cultural boundaries like me and rich ryle don't agree on anything but we agree on term limits mm -hmm. but in terms so of look, people, I'm, I'm like i'm just talking yeah. just practically man like i'm absolutely for solving gerrymandering i think it's a more it's 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 a it's a it's a egregious issue it's like viscerally disgusting if we could solve gerrymandering yeah that would be one key to solving the crisis we're in but i think there's not just a single key and i think the easier solution might be term limits, but but yeah, gerrymandering is a problem. But they're not mutually exclusive. I don't know why you you shouldn't present them as mutual exclusives. You know, it's like that's the flaw in your well, argument. I think. I, I can, think I, can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the problems with term limits not being applied and like letting politicians continue to run and getting better with experience is a lot of times in the political field specifically, getting better at your job means getting more entrenched with people who don't necessarily have the best interests in, at heart of the people. So you've got more opportunities than to become, um, to know the system in a way that benefits you as opposed to benefiting the people you're supposed to be serving. So instead of like working to make new connections and working to make new ideas happen, you are able to lean on old ideas, old structures that don't necessarily work anymore. And this is a problem I think specifically that applies to the political field, not necessarily to other fields. Just just a um, take. So I, I hear you, but again, the idea that um, people on Congress aren't serving the people they represent only holds up when you're looking at Congress as a whole, you know? But if, Chances are, if you look up your the, the approval rating of your representative, chances are that that person, regardless of where you live, chances are that person has a pretty, pretty high approval rating. So people will say across the country that their congressperson does represent them. But maybe it's the Congress as a whole doesn't. Maybe it's because so, people are just tricked by and large. And we just like our, we, we feel like this terrible lie that's being perpetrated against us couldn't be also being perpetrated against us by our local representative. I don't know. It's the corruption. There's some, I mean, and I think like what Zach, I mean, Zach does make a, it does make kind of a point with the gerrymandering and stuff. I do, I do feel like the gerrymandering is also, is also part of the corruption. So we do need mm -hmm. to address that somewhat. And, you know, you don't want to like, you know, I know we want to have like someone young and fresh, but you don't want to bring in like someone like Pete Buttigieg or whatever. You know, you, we got to be, we also got to be very meticulous when it comes to who we bring into, you know, in, into like the Supreme Court and Congress and stuff, you know, and, um, and yeah, but it's, it's, I, I feel like once we get rid of the corruption, like, like at the same time, like while also considering term, putting in term lists and stuff, I, f I feel like we will, we will get the people that we want rather than what 
the the powers that be wants. If that makes sense. So I don't think the problem with Pete Buttigieg was his age or his experience. I think it was Pete Buttigieg, just to. Uh, yeah, he was bought out. It was just him. He was. Um, you're muted, Shale. People recognize that he was just a completely blank slate, a, a total puppet. You know, he's just a guy, a mayor. Uh, a military person that they could that a lot of people could give the right platform to. Yeah, he he reminds me a lot of Rahm Emanuel from from my area of Chicago. That's that's just, just a like face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just a and and part of the all talk no buy and just part of the problem, you know. Same with this new mayor we have, like Lori <laughs> Lori Lightfoot. She don't even support UBI. It's like my God. You know, and she wants to talk about ending poverty and shit. <laughs> and she's probably old too, right? <laughs> she, I mean, she's a, you know, she she's a, a she's a black female, and that's why they they put her in there. Oh. You know? <laughs> and then and then she was all, and then she was talking about like oh how you know she was trying to be all make uh, smart as we marked about Trump and stuff. It's like you don't even support UBI. You're not even helping the city. So she like, says stuff like you know. So does she say something? Oh my God! Nobody's gonna get UBI. I'm like, you gotta get your ass a job. <laughs> she talk like that. Like, her her exact words, Jose, were um, I I rather teach people how to fish or something. You know, teach them how to fish. I'm like, <laughs> you ain't doing shit. You just you're not even putting. That's a really awkward suggestion. Fishing cannot possibly be everybody's career. Just like a caste system in India. That's how she's she's literally doing. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I I don't like lightweight. You look like you want to say something, Zach. No, I don't. I actually I I cut out. And I just came back on, and I oh. I, I missed I missed Zach, the last. Let me, let me ask you then. What thirty you seconds, think? and then it came back and. You said it sounds like I want to say something. I have no idea what you guys are just well, talking about. Then, you know, <laughs> let me ask you, what do you think of my of my counter argument, Zach? That although, yes, there's a lot of value to keeping the knowledge of people who've been in the system for a very long time, it is not um, of equal value to removing the ossification, the this the dementia the corruption to drain the swamp for lack of a better term to remove all right you know just i guess removing the ossification and corruption from government is the is the better term we don't need a euphemism and then to evoke something really uh divisive because the president trump said it and that's a divisive thing anyway but what do you think i think although all the things you said are true uh, except for it being a, a mutually exclusive with gerrymandering, which I don't agree. Um, I don't even know what gerrymandering means. I'm not from the U.S. It's the division of districts in, in a politically advantageous way, so that districts are drawn like jigsaw puzzles, just to just to maximize uh, you know voters for a certain politician or party, so that the same people who draw the borders get to stay in power. That's gerrymandering. And it's a problem because it is a who watches, watches the watchman type issue where the people in control have no one to police them. And if they are bad actors, they can just act badly and promise us that they're not. So yeah, that's, it's, 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 the, it's an uh, issue with no solution from a built-in logistical governmental And the other standpoint. side doesn't care if it's stacked against them because they are guaranteed to win every time in this situation. So you right. think that the other like, team would be mad that they were getting less players, but they're just happy yeah. that their players are staying on the board. Regardless, so someone should just run on the platform and like here's a concession. It's a concession platform. Like we'll just fucking divide it along mathematical, global, scientific lines of law, latitude and longitude. Right? Yeah. That's that's the way we should do it. Okay. That's be on somebody's platform. Um, and the other problem. So what do you think that? Causes... Would you would you would you agree, Zach? Like it's. Although, yes, there's all this value in the knowledge and it's important to keep communities connected to their people. All those points are just not adding up to like we to, 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 to solving the problem, which is what we could do if we sacrifice those things, you know? Well, I don't necessarily know. I don't, you know, 
basically term limits would basically be telling um, the people of, for example, like I'm thinking of James Clyburn, who is a, a civil rights hero, and he's been in Congress we representing a, a district in South goal. Carolina for yeah. a long time. You'd basically be telling his his uh, constituents that he can't represent them anymore. You know, you're basically you're taking away choice. Yeah, and we got to suck it up. It's time. It's time to fucking do the hard thing. We can't, it's like, it's so seductive in America to have the combination of like advertising and money in politics because then we can present it like, oh no, you should not have to. It would be egregious. It would be immoral to do this thing that actually is the right fucking thing. And the people in power have made a commercial to tell you not to do it. Maybe a good solution to him having to turn over, even though his people would like him to stay, is for him to groom somebody who shares his values and mentor them into the position so that they have an option that is similar enough to him and in his spirit that they can vote for the same ideas again, but with a new, fresh perspective. I mean, that could help at least. I don't know if this is the same or not, but isn't that kind of like when... um, when you had when you had uh Dr. Dr. Jermaine Johnson going against you know what was it Jimmy Bells at the uh North South Carolina district and stuff and, and he managed to win but Jimmy Bells he's been there for several decades essentially and I, and I believe like there were there were people who who liked him who didn't want him gone but a lot of people were like no we want change and nothing's getting done around here and we need somebody who will get it done and then that's why you know and that's why Jermaine Dr. Jermaine Johnson managed to win the seat, you know, and, and start his first day um, in, in January because, um, and, he, and he he went against all the corruption, all the establishment and stuff, and all because these people wanted change. They wanted a better, a better tomorrow, you know, rather than stick with the status quo, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah. On the uh, subject of term limits, uh, I think one thing that it would actually increase would be to vote people on their merit. So I mean, if uh, if you come up on your at the end of your term, you don't have to leave government completely. Um, you can find a different position within the government still. Like for example, uh, you can go from uh, state house to state senate to U.S. house, U.S. senate to the governorship. Um, you know, and it's it's not like oh, well, you, you did your time and now you just got to like fade off into the, the sunset. Um, I, I think you can you would be able to find uh, another position where you could still be a positive change in the community. And then uh, let's say that it, that if for whatever reason, it doesn't work out. Well, you can still work behind the scenes in terms of drafting legislation. You can take the Andrew Yang route and start a nonprofit. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of official, beneficial things that could come from it. Uh, I, I think, it, uh, I guess it could potentially could further entrench the revolving door between uh, you know, government workers and lobbying agencies. Um, for, for better or for worse, but I think uh, I think the net positive at the end of the day uh, would, would outweigh any negative aspects that would come from term limits, in my opinion. But I mean, what Zach says definitely does make sense. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, gerrymandering is obviously a huge issue that needs to be tackled as well. Yeah, yeah, but you put it. Those are all good points. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The knowledge does not disappear, right? That's that's the really. That's one of the key counters to, I think, to the case you're making. That knowledge does not disappear. Uh, people can still serve their communities, still serve the country, still serve the government in a different capacity, just a bit behind the scenes. Just it is a very noble thing to do that. And I think if you're in it for the right reasons, you'll stick around. If you were in it for the wrong reasons, you will self-select out and go take a vacation. Enjoy. Enjoy the Bahamas. You know, I think that's a system that works. Term limits will work. And yes, term limits might even lead to to gerrymandering being being solved. They're not mutual exclusives again. You know, we we can't have our cake and eat it too. Americans are being told by a political culture that protects the establishment that we have to have our cake and eat it too. We can't make any sacrifices. We can't tell these people that their representative that they love can't represent them anymore yeah because it would solve the problem no people have to make a sacrifice if they want to solve the problem let's grow up in mass let's be adults you know that's what i have to say yeah i i think we all agree on the problems that need to be solved and you know you guys all make 
great points. And this is certainly not a hill that I'm going to die on. You know, I don't think term limits either way is the most important thing. But well, about how we you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's about. just that. I, I think that I actually think fixing gerrymandering and fixing and getting like um, democracy dollars, I think those two things will fix the problems without doing anything about term limits, you know? I could be wrong nah, about that. That, that I, keeps I us know. stuck in this cycle. That keeps us stuck in this cycle. Let's keep talking about it. Let's keep arguing about it. You know, I don't know. Democracy dollars is really powerful. I think above, I would have democracy dollars rated above everything here, personally, because giving the people the power to literally just, influence the government. But generally, we should be willing to make a sacrifice, you know, as like the, the underlying yeah. point I want to make. Right. I just don't know if that's sacrifice would actually do good you know it's kind of like you know it's like it's like being so afraid though we have to stop feeling like we're entitled to to have the thing we love just because we love it we have to look at our priorities and say "Mm, is the thing we love hurting the country yeah is was well, not like democracy dollars you're more likely to get term limits and you're more likely to get Jeremy. Jeremy yeah i'm in favor of democracy dollars i'm just talking about the, the the political culture the underlying political culture of america that's what i'm critiquing and if it and if it means leading giving us a better future like that's what needs to be done i mean we're not talking about like really trying something new like you know trying a new flavor or whatever this is this is our this is our lives they're they're in the balance and we need someone who is more than qualified to like really help us and, and you know give us give us longevity you know, a better future for us, the next yeah. generation, just, so on and so forth. Like we can't be stuck in this cycle. Like we need um, exactly the political argument that we can't do this thing because it would be a it would constitute a sacrifice. Does not hold water. Okay, that's just basically what I'm saying. We have five minutes. We should probably do outros. Do what? Oh yeah, we should do outros. Closings. This is like if you got anything to add or whatever, just let it out. I'm not, well, it's I'm a bit not, off I'm, topic, yeah. but it's, it's a little bit off topic. But if, for instance, if I decided that I wanted to live in the U.S., in your yeah. suggestion, what what state would would you say people Don't. are most likely to behave like the French people, like get stuff done instead of being so fake? Okay. Uh, well, maybe like um, may maybe Oregon, but fucking don't. Stay where you are because that's much more French. Okay, don't come here. We're we're a virus. Don't don't. I you're literally honestly, I mean, a virus. Um, I'm right not afraid now. of coronavirus. I think it's just. I think no, it's no, 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 no. It's not that. We're a cultural virus. We don't don't think about us. It should be tiring to know Maybe about. Maybe I'll just America. go to France. I'll take. Don't, don't, yes, go to France. Go to France. Anywhere but here. We're a void of a country. Just don't. We, we, we've lost our way. We don't uh-huh. know where we're going yet, and you don't want to get caught up in that. Come, and, come to Texas. But if you do in Oregon or California, come, bro. Come we're, speaking we're, of we're, that, we're going to succeed and things are going to be Speaking just of fine. this, like a lot of Americans, <laughs> speaking of this thing, a lot of Americans think because what they see and can't see of Canada from TV, they're like, oh my God, it sounds amazing. Let's just go to Canada. Well, English Canada is not much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe it, but like, um, like I got to thank you for sticking around, you know. Uh, I know, I know you're like nervous and tense. I don't mean to feel like you feel ganged up on. I know you're representing hey. a, a, no, no, a this, minority perspective. Okay, this is great. This is great. I, I just want to make sure the, 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 the tension is healthy. All right. Okay. No, no, no. Everybody's okay. Okay. As long as you don't put pineapple on pizza, you'll be fine. Not just kidding. I put pineapple on pizza. Damn, you know, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's essentially it's a, it's a salt, it's a fat, it's a sweet, just, it's an acid. You can't lose. Right. I love pineapple pizza. I, I don't oh. even want the ham on it. Get rid of the Canadian bacon and just double it's, me up it's on good the pineapple. food chemistry, right? Just give me a chocolate cake already. <laughs> it's just good food chemistry. Yeah. Chocolate cake too, but not on pizza. Oh God! I'm no. put chocolate on ch- chocolate chip on a pizza. Hmm. I don't think that quite fits as well i haven't had a good pizza in such a long time at least i'm not around the mayborn forest in my life even pregnant women are like yeah that's too much i'm sure there's great pizza in texas (laughs) and the reason you haven't had it has nothing to do with you Uh, it's very hard to find um there are like one or two places that are supposedly rated pretty highly and they were i'm sure 
if you go to Yelp and or it's a lot just for a slice, you know. Yeah. But like information travels, you know, these days information travels. So the way to make a good New York style pizza definitely has infiltrated most parts of Texas. And you can probably find it if you, pizza is good if you know pizza. where to look. Except yeah. for chocolate cake pizza. Oh wow. <laughs> Chocolate cake pizza? I'm I'm old school. I like the I like the basic I like the basic toppings like you know cheese. I like pepperoni. Yep, yeah, meat they, lovers. Sure, you you it know so oh, it's so I'm, funny to eat a meat lovers a pizza in front of a vegetarian. This podcast to end. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll get to the end. Sorry, uh, what are you saying, Zach? Shell, you you know I'm, I'm after this, I promise. Yeah. Really a New Yorker, right? I yeah, I know. Recently. I know. Yeah, I know. Okay, so, yeah. So, so like my. I know, I know. Pizza standards are high, you know. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Right. I know, of course. <laughs> this all comes with that understanding. Wait, remind me of what part of New York you're from, though. Is it Long Island? I think he's froze again for a sec here. What about Manhattan? I know some guy on YouTube. His name is Louis Rossman. He does tech. tech things Manhattan stuff, but he is talks just for rich people. Too. Just fuck it, man. It's bullshit. It's just for rich people. I don't mean, I not mean to end your train of thought. I'm so sorry. Continue. I mean, there's this guy. He's from Manhattan, and he's on YouTube. His name is Louis Rossman. He does a lot of tech repair videos, and his philosophies are pretty similar to what we're talking about. Like he's all he talk. He, he does rants about fakeness and like people like exploiting each other. And he means he refers to Apple, the you know the company Apple, and how they exploit their customers and everything. And that's pretty much what goes on in this world right now. Well, like Apple the, is a, uh, yeah, it's a garden wall economy. Game. What's that? Exploitation is the name of the game. That's capitalism. Yep. No, unbalanced completely. That's the problem. We took all the caps off and just said, everybody slam the gas as hard as you can and try to get what you yeah, like, Just do capitalism. Don't do anything else, okay? They charge an iPhone 6 for like 1000 bucks and it just breaks like breaks, breaks <laughs> at a drop of hat. <laughs> Capitalism's fine. It knows what it's doing. Let capitalism do it, guys. It's capitalism fine. is an animal, and it will eat until it pops. The market knows. I feel like eating square cakes until I pop right now. Delicious. I would do that too. And I'm gonna take I mean, Izzy's cake. You're very hungry. We have three. Okay, I promised you we would end this. So and let's I, just say our goodbyes. Mia, what's your Twitter? My Twitter is at Mia Songbird, M-E-A and Songbird, like it sounds like. Just one thing, no spaces. But you don't sound Thank like you. a bird, though. She's but, not. But, In addition to being it. a speaker who's been here from the very beginning, Mia is our scheduler. And we are always, always grateful for that. So thank you, Mia. I will let you go. Goodbye. You're very welcome. You have a wonderful night. You too. All right. Everybody else, shall we... Uh, who else is anyone else want to say goodbye? Yep. Goodbye, guys. My name's Ariel. You can find me on Ariel's Armada or Ariel's underscore Armada on Twitter. So it's A-R-I-L A-R-I-E-L-S underscore A-R-M-A-D-A. And I'm on YouTube as Revolutionary Thinking. It's been fun and interesting. It's been fun and interesting. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. Um, um so I'm Zach Sacker. You can find me on Twitter, Z A C H underscore S A C H E R. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube channel if you are inclined. It is called The Liberal Conservative Report. And I just usually interview guests and I have an awesome upcoming lineup. So uh, check that out if you're interested. Shale, thanks for having me. And Zach, uh, I want to thank you for a, a hell of an episode, man. This really was yeah. a great episode, very much so on you. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you all. Yes. Sorry, I kept cutting out the whole time. Okay. But uh, other than that, yeah, it was, it was great, great conversation. Okay, yeah, uh, make, sure, make, sure, make sure create a podcast called Zach Speaks. I mean, Zach's got <laughs> Zach's got the liberal conservative report, you know. Yeah, check okay. it out. Check. Oh, by the way, Izzy, I wanted to say I checked out your channel a few nights ago. Really. Uh, um, yeah, I did, and you are one hell of a of an editor. Do you do all those graphics and stuff yourself? I, I try, but I mean, I, well, those, those other ones are just like you know templates and stuff, you know, because I use like one yeah. of these programs or whatever to edit, 
and they have like various features or whatever that you add you know a lot of anything that's pre-made but as far as like doing it diy style that will take a lot of work because every everything i've done was from scratch and i mean i have some experience with like uh audio and video but nothing professional so i mean this is just you know me doing everything by trial and error and stuff so and yeah like that one video you saw it actually it actually took a lot out of me and like so i'm like i'm like thank god i got i got it done but <laughs> uh, i mean there's just so much i want to display however i am in like i i have these like these very serious help around i know you know show 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 um you know uh feels me but it's like um it's just like i have these problems where help problems where um i can't do these things full time especially like like for hours on end because if i do what happens is i get these incredibly painstaking migraines and then i collapse or mm -hmm. vice versa and and sometimes like i would get like just get very anxious and stuff and and like and I, I literally had to make like a choice. So, so after like Terrible. I'm talking to after I'm after I'm like talking to you guys, I'll probably be sleeping, sleeping everything off. And, and or like if, and and um, like no, or I have to like uh, choose between talking with you guys or making dinner or doing this and that. I had to like get takeout instead because it's like it's I didn't have time to do the dishes and stuff like that. Or because it's like <laughs> that will that will that will um literally put me in bed for like hours on end. Then by the time I'm up. The podcast will be over you know so like all these all these things like i'm literally choosing and and usually and here's the other thing i am in this environment that is actually contributing to that that's making me sicker and the people that i'm living with right now who happen to be my parents they're the reason why i'm like this so i mean if i was in a better a better like environment a better place um and you know, and and like you know, away from like all the drama, all the all the all the toxicity, the narcissism that we were discussing in this podcast, guaranteed, um, I would probably be much better off. I mean, there's no, there's also like, well, then again, there's no guarantee that I will that I will survive this because if I once I get out, like I will require, most likely I will require a lot of intensive um, care and stuff like that, or maybe I'll luck out and and you know start getting better. But healing is you know, is subjective. But I mean, right now I'm just, it's just like, I can only do so much, but like, if I'm able to, if, if someone manages to like, you know, find me a place that is away from all this, mm -hmm. not in the middle of nowhere, but just like away from a lot of the, the chunk of all this toxicity, yeah. then you will see a lot more of those videos, Zach, you know, like, but right now you just, I can only do those like what once or twice a week. I can't do it like, you know. Um, <laughs> and the other, the only ones I can do the most are those, you know, what the the ones for is for uncut where I'm just just talking or whatever, barely using any edits. But even those require edits, so it's 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 a lot of stuff. And then and then like um yeah like I'm doing all this manipulation with my my parents and stuff family and a lot of the people in my area like they just don't they don't give a shit about me like they're not helping me at all they 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 think like what Jose was mentioning because I don't look like I'm sick like I'm disabled enough they don't they think I'm not worth they don't think I'm worth their taxpayer dollars and stuff so so yeah I'm like trying to like and and the housing this housing situation oh my god yeah. it's like they just put me off to the wayside so it's like um so I've been I've been trying to like reach out to whoever I could say hey can someone you know uh help me out or you know it don't have to be financial but just like you know just if you know somebody you know just just you know spread the word away because like I can't just um I I don't because I don't feel like I'm gonna make it to 2024 to be honest be, because of this situation now I'm in and and how how my my health problems have actually gotten worse. Um, every single day and it's like and everything is just questionable it's like some days i get some days again i get lucky and i like i have some energy but then something comes up something like interferes with that so it's like okay now now i'm completely spent and then the next day i'm I'm worse so and i and i hate being like this but it's like i wish i want to i want to be able to travel i want to be able to do vlogs i want to be able to like you know really showcase my skills or whatever and start a business and all these other things but i had to put those on the back burner 
because of the situations that I'm in, because of the people that I'm around, it's and it's 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 sickening. It's an you endless know? cycle of stress. It's just yeah, it's endless. Me. I know. That, it's like it, the one thing that would it, that would solve it, you don't that, have. That's income. what that's what gravitated to me yeah. the most to Andrew Yang because um I I went to the Chicago rally just because of that I don't I don't travel. I, that's the other thing with health problems. I can't I can't travel long distances let alone go into the downtown area. Like the, the farthest I've gone was to the grocery store, which was literally right down the street from me. I mean, I take Uber, I take Uber Lyft and stuff, but it's like, it's, it's not that far. But if I go any farther, that in turn makes me collapse and all this other stuff. And like when I was at the Chicago rally, I started to get incredibly anxious and I started, you know, almost collapsing because also my phone was having problems. So I never get the chance to really enjoy myself and I wanted to, you know, but it's because of this and, and, you know when when uh when Yang and Humanity Four managed to give me that two or that two hundred fifty um um uh payment or whatever but for your PayPal like I was grateful for that uh but um but unfortunately I mean I it's like if I I don't what I need is like you know a UBI because like if UBI was available for me hell yeah I would have moved hell yeah I would have gotten out of here and I probably would have uh you know. Uh, been traveling, got me a, got me one of those drones and 4K uh, cameras. And participated stuff. in the fucking economy, huh? <laughs> and, and guys, guys, I would I would be full on Yang. I would be right on the, I would be out there on the front lines with you guys. I mean, but right now all I can do is what I can from where I am. And and I, I and I know like there are people who tell me keep on fighting, keep on fighting. Well. I'm I'm actually running on empty, and this is the Man, best. Let me tell you, right you that's bad advice. Relax. That's what you should do. <laughs> One thing, relax. Don't put it on yourself that you should solve your own problems. Just it is a trick. It's a trap. The system is trying to waste your energy. Just relax. You know, try to take. Don't you don't have to be constantly taking stock of your situation. Yeah, that's that's just going to cause anxiety. Um. And you know, uh, is he, relax and have the faith to know it's not your fault. And uh, yeah, and you know what? Also, feel good that you're working towards a solution. Like you're on a podcast, reaching out mm -hmm. to people in Chicago who perhaps could hear and perhaps could help you. So, well, I mean, right now I don't need to. Right, I can I can relax once I get results. You know, I can relax once I'm. No, that's I'm, another. That's that's another. That's yeah. another thing you're you're telling yourself to waste your mental energy. I've been there. I've been no, there. I'm just no. I'm just I'm just being being it's honest because like, you know I can relax and then and then something that I wasn't expecting happened. You know, and usually it's it's usually something bad. And and you know, shoot, like uh, just recently, and I wish me. Oh, was, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, you do have to be vigilant. You do have to be vigilant. Well, the other thing is like, here's, but here's don't beat yourself up. Well, yeah. well, here's here's the thing. Like my my mother has been. You know, she she would write these um she, she would write like these manipulative letters and stuff and always trying to get near me and stuff and and, and like a couple of days ago she just walked into my room and just um placed th this this letter on you know saying like how uh, i'm talking to others but but not them and how you know i need to you know take care of them and stuff and i need to do do this and that and say and and trying to say things like well if you feel um, like you're not safe here, then maybe you should just move, you know, it's like, and, and so as like that reverse psychology stuff. And like those, when I see those sorts of things, it's like, it just, that, that just makes me even worse. And not to mention, you know, you had these guys coming in, messing with the roof and coming and at random times, a lot of these things, like they just, you know, like right after I'm just out of it. It's like, and, and it's like, it, and it, it just, it happens at random times. So it's like, so I have, yeah. I, I don't have the luxury to relax because of that. So just, just, just let you know, I mean, I, I stay saying, vigilant. Yes. You're right. You don't have the luxury yeah. to relax, but yeah, I, mean, know, I, I mean, I wish people would at least like, like stress as little, as little as you must is kind of the thing to keep in mind. Don't, yeah. don't yeah. waste so, your energy beating yourself up even a little bit. But one thing I'll say, you know, Izzy, you're super talented dude, you know, and that's why I brought up you know your your channel i think you're super talented i think everyone else should check it out and i think you're doing the right thing you know you're, you're trying to start this channel and start a brand it sounds like you have ideas just keep at it and you know i i think you said you wanted to try to do a video every day 
don't even do that because that's that's a lot of extra stress right there. And and I know firsthand because when I want when I was starting my channel, I wanted to do a video every day, and it's just way too much. It's a yeah, lot of work. Don't set arbitrary and, goals just to set them. Just right, right. To your, li hey, actually, take on, the feedback work. of your feelings. Like you know, right, you know what you can do, and it can you know, modulate. Don't. Don't set an external goal just because you yeah. think you should have to. Guys, guys, here's the thing. One the video at a time, do it right. And when it's done, it's done. And and when you don't have a big audience to begin with, when you're just starting out, if you're doing videos every single day for the few people that are following you, it, it's going to be overwhelming. You know what I mean? Because not everybody is going to watch every single video. Well, so, guys, I mean, like, you might be better just doing once a week, once every two weeks, putting out a quality product. You well, guys, the, the main reason why I'm doing this is, you know, to get enough money to get the hell out. But unfortunately, you know, that's um, apparently that's not really a possibility. So and this is like my my last resort. That's why I'm I'm literally trying to like I'm literally like, you know, literally killing myself making these vi videos. But it's um, I mean, it's, it's like this is the only option I have because there there are no other people who help me know the resources and everyone else is, thinks that 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 you know I'm I'm not worth it unless they want something from me and I'm noticing that like when I do make videos or whatever then they're like they 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 want a piece they're like ooh you oh you starting this you starting that here you know I'm so proud of you I want it's like you know screw you and yeah and it's understand. like yeah it's like all, all these legions coming in it's like but no one's really like you know um say so like okay um yeah i see your potential and we're going to do what we can to you know to make sure you have that energy or whatever you know or, or actually you know if you say you want to get out we're going to help you get out and stuff like i didn't get any of that just like just a bunch of people say oh honey i understand how you feeling and you know what they also said shell you gotta yeah. relax they said that too so you know i'm sorry people, i'm sorry then if i gave you bad advice or if i evoked some, some no some, i'm just yeah. i'm just letting yeah. you know i'm just letting you know it's like you're, you're, i'm taking it in you know it's new it's just, well, it's well i think shale meant that in a good way to say well, you gotta yeah, relax course. like know, no, yeah. not not no no not beat yourself up but i yeah. think like like but the way the other people say it to you i think they mean just relax like don't get your hopes up not not they don't actually mean relax they mean like oh you think you're like big now but no you're not that i am um, i think i understand what you're saying that's, like you feel like that's the kind th there's a difference in being genuine condescending, about it. yeah like like and being condescending yeah. about it Chill i think i understand genuine. they were I think, I think i understand what you mean now when you say you can't relax you feel that you have a way to generate social currency which you perhaps could use to get yourself out of your situation. So you feel that it is your obligation to do so. And you think the 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 only way you can generate social currency is by making videos. And you think that it is better to make them on a regular schedule. So you think that it is like your responsibility to yourself. That's like, I'm just trying to, is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, and, and Shell, yeah. like the, the, here's the okay. thing, like the people that are saying this or whatever, like they are in charge they're in state agency they're in housing they are doctors they are you know they're they're in the social security offices and stuff and they tell me to be like oh uh just you know i'll pray for you or you know just do what you can it's like that's that's why it's like okay you got you have the authority to like do something and you're going to sit here and, and bullshit me or whatever it, and, and but i can't like really tell them that because then it will take them like half a second to make my life even worse. They'll write up a freaking probation letter on me, or they yeah, will yeah, take yeah. the the security guards. Right. Out. This is it. Right. This you is know, it. exactly. This is, this is it. What exactly why we're Yang Gang? Because we see yeah. that's literally what chains. Jose was talking about. Shit right. Like we, yeah. we we see the chains that these people have. That's why they want to control all these services and not give us the resources directly. You to to keep us in check. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Izzy, I, I have a suggestion for you. Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the website, Fiverr, but people, it's where my like the Fiverr. logo for my for my podcast. Yeah, F I V E R R. I think. You've been there, done that. Um, Sorry, Zach. You've been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. I well, have you like taking a uh, 
uh, like a showcase, maybe like a two, three minute video of your skills. Like even that video you have on YouTube, if you just take like a small segment, segment, put it up on Fiverr just to showcase your abilities, you could get people to hire you just to edit their videos. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I but not at the scale where he could actually that. go move anywhere. It's like never going to add up to rent money. So it's well, also, right, but you got to You got to do one step at a time, you know? What is oh, that? Really that? No, also, that, that's not a that. that's not a step though. That's like a treadmill. That's like I agree. You, you, I agree. You do have to do things one step at a time, but that's not actually a step. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I do want to add. I can't work. Like that's why I can't like make videos often, whatever. I can't work because like, again, like if if I even even part time, like if I do any sort of put in any sort of effort, um, I will you know I will collapse or uh, you know I will you know have, you know major major panic attacks, outbursts and stuff. Um, so how I, how I am now will be different an hour from now. Um, like one, one minute I could be pretty talking and then the next I'm just, I'm like a zombie. So it's like, and it's, it's, it's never like, it doesn't really, you know, it's never really consistent and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wish I could work or whatever. And, and, and I'm, and if I am, I'm like, I'm just extremely, uh, selective and meticulous when it comes to those sorts of things otherwise it's like you know I, I remind people like i have tons of limitations and it's like you know if, if you're going to have me make a video it can't be over a minute or it can't be like all this extra stuff whatever it has to be like already set up and i gotta make a few changes or whatever but if it's nothing like that then it's like i, I can't really do it but even even so i'm just i'm just like it's like listen, I don't even have, have that. I'm just, I'm, I'm barely, I'm barely getting by. <laughs> you know, it's, you know. Yeah, it's wrong that it, it shouldn't be upon you to uh, perpetually uh, put forth a Herculean effort just to have the hope that you might save enough to survive in the noticed, future. That's yeah. absurd. It makes much more sense for you to try to just address the systemic issue by getting together with other people who feel there's a problem. So. Here we are. Uh, Jeremy says we gotta go, so uh, goodbye. Oh, Jeremy's got it. He's got it. No, it's, it's been a good show. We shouldn't stay here forever. <laughs> love you guys. Yeah. Uh, I love the Twitch audience. Wish we had we, more time, but yeah. Watching stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, was it Izzy? Reach out to me because I'm a YouTuber too. Bye. And yeah, uh, Jeremy's gotta go. <laughs> right. All right. I, I, will, I will, Ariel. I will now. All right, guys. Take All care. Right. Take care. All right. Goodbye. Great show. Yeah. Great Fantastic show. show. One yeah. of our best. Joe, excellent show. Yeah. See you again soon, friends. All right. See you. Crazy show. <laughs>